Hello yogis, um, my name is Kathy. Welcome to this 30 minute yoga practice. Today's yoga will be Vin Yin, which is a combination of vinyasa yoga. That will be the first half of the class. And then the second half of the class, a yin yoga, which is a long, more deep stretch yoga class. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's start by warming up. So we will come into an active child's pose. So knees are as wide as your mat, toes are touching, your booty is on your heels, your belly is nice and tight, and you're going to bring your hands in between your knees and just walk your hands out. And as your hands walk out, you're going to pull your tailbone back. That will make it easier for your booty to remain on your heels. But if it comes up, that's okay. It's just sort of you want the feeling of pushing the booty back on the heels. Once your hands are straight out in front of you, bring your forehead to the mat. For this early child's pose, I want the elbows up off the mat, nice and active in your child's pose. And then you can sway back and forth, right and left. This will help the booty get a little bit lower onto the heels. You can also push into one hand and the other, trying to get back into the pose. And then when you're settled into the pose where you feel like it's your fullest expression, then let's start some breathing. We're gonna take three big breaths to start our practice. Inhale, hold, Exhale, inhale, hold, exhale, and see if on the exhale you can pull the belly in, really get all the air out. Inhale, belly goes out, hold, exhale, belly comes in. Now inhale, push into your hands, curl your toes under and come into your first downward facing dog. That's an upside down V with your body. Pedaling out your dog, coming high on the tippy toes of your right foot and pushing the left heel down and then coming high on the toes of the left foot, putting the right heel down and just pedaling out the dog getting a nice stretch in the back of the legs, in the calves. Arms are nice and straight, a lot of power through the arms. And then again, when you're ready, coming into stillness, chest is pushing towards your thighs, gaze is through your legs, tailbone is up. And straighten those arms, inhale, Exhale, wrap your shoulders around your spine. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, come high on your toes and tiptoe your feet towards your hands. Coming into a ragdoll pose, feet are about hips width or two fists distance apart or they can be wider if that feels good to you. Grabbing opposite elbows and just hanging here. You can also sway right and left. The idea being sort of trying to imagine the forearms reaching toward the mat. And you can bend your knees in this pose if you need to. We are early in the practice, so you may not be warmed up yet. And then come to stillness. Gazes through your legs. Release your hands toe heel your feet together so that your toes touch and your heels are maybe an inch apart. For this first halfway lift, I want you to grab your shins. So hands on your shins, tailbone back, crown of the head forward, shoulder blades wrapping around the spine. This is halfway lift or prepare. Inhale, exhale, fold. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, halfway lift, get those shoulders back, exhale, fold. Now soften the knees, sweep the arms all the way up, tall mountain, 
pelvis is a little bit forward, booty is tight, maybe a tiny little back bend here, reaching up, energy in the fingertips, and exhale, fold. We'll take our first sun A, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, plant the hands, feet step back, high plank. For this first one, knees to the mat, bend your elbows, the elbows stay close to the ribs, and push through on the inhale, chaturanga and upward facing dog. Exhale, back to your downward dog. So we're gonna do that two more times. If you are familiar with the vinyasa, you do you. I'm gonna go through increasing levels of difficulty with the vinyasa, but you don't, you can always modify or you can always make it harder if that is in your practice. Inhale, come high on your toes. Exhale, take a big step with the right foot, big step with the left toe heel the feet together halfway lift crown of the head forward tailbone back exhale fold inhale all the way up tall mountain baby back bend fingertips strong belly is tight exhale fold now let's take that with the breath inhale halfway lift exhale high plank to low plank or knees, chest, chin. Inhale to your upward facing dog. Pull those shoulder blades back, chest is straight ahead. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take two breaths here. Inhale, exhale. One more inhale, exhale. This time coming high on your toes, you can take those baby steps, you can take one big step, or you can float feet to hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up, tall mountain, strong arms. A little back bend, pelvis pushes forward. Exhale, fold. Here's our last sun A. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high to low plank, or once again, you can come to your knees. Upward facing dog with knees off the mat, shoulder blades wrapping around the spine, gazes straight ahead. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take three breaths here. If you find your shoulders are all scrunched up in downward dog, you can come into a seal position with your hands. So your fingertips pointing toward the side of the mat. That's more comfortable for you in down dog, then go ahead and do that. One last breath. Come high on your toes, bend your knees and walk or float to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend the knees, sweep the arms coming into chair pose. We're gonna hold this chair for a little bit while I cue the body alignment for chair. So your weight needs to be in your heels. You should be able to look down and see your big toes. Your arms can be straight kind of at a diagonal in front of you, or if you have the flexibility up toward the ceiling, they can be apart or they can be together. Just try to lower your booty. If you can take your toes off the ground, that's how much weight should be in your heels. And chair, inhale, exhale, hands through heart center and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, high to low plank, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, knees on or off the mat. Exhale, downward facing dog. Two breaths here, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. 
Step your right foot forward, right behind your right hand. You want to have your left foot kind of in railroad tracks with your right, coming into high crescent lunge. So once you're in that lunge, nice deep bend in the right knee. The knee is not over the toes, back leg is straight, heel is up off the ground. Inhale, arms to the ceiling, high crescent. If you want a little extra challenge here, bend that left knee and just dip. One, two, three, otherwise just hold. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Right hand goes back, left hand goes forward. So your arms are at a T and your gaze is out over that back right hand, twisting here in high crescent. Pulling those shoulder blades together, getting a little shoulder twist, working on the balance. Inhale, come back to crescent lunge. Exhale, hands to the mat. Coming back to downward dog in whatever way that you would like. You can go through the full vinyasa as I did, or you can just come right back to downward dog. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Left foot steps forward. Reposition your right foot coming into your high crescent lunge on the left side. Nice deep bend in that left knee. Right leg is super straight. Arms coming up. Arms are strong. Fingertips are sparked. There's energy, they're not floppy. And if you want that little extra balance challenge or oomph, you can bend your right knee and up, bend and up bend and up and then hands come to heart center left arm goes back right arm goes straight ahead they're at a T that gaze goes back to the left hand pulling the shoulder blades together your belly is tight inhale exhale inhale back to crescent lunge hands to the mat, come back to downward dog, however you would like, vinyasa or no vinyasa, modified vinyasa, anything that works for you. Two breaths and down dog, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, right foot steps forward now the left foot comes fully onto the mat it's at an angle it's at like 10 o'clock you're coming into warrior one so there's a nice if you need to scooch scooching is always appropriate in yoga so if you need to widen your legs like i just did you can nice deep bend in the right knee left foot is fully on the ground heel and ball of the foot once you're there I want you to grab your hips with your hands and sort of pull your hips so that both hips are facing the front of the mat. You don't want to be out here, you want to be here. And then hands to the ceiling, warrior one. This is a pose of power. Weight in the feet, push into the blade edge of that left foot. Gaze goes up, arms are straight. Inhale, exhale, bring your arms down, interlace your fingers behind you so they're right at your booty level and it's like you're praying, your thumbs are crossed, pull your shoulder blades back, maybe pull into a little baby back bend and then crown of the head comes to the floor, humble your warrior. Right shoulder if it can, inside the right knee. Knuckles toward the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. 
get a little lower, and then come all the way up. Hands go to the ceiling, hands come to the mat, right leg goes back, vinyasa, or find your way back to downward dog, however you want to do that. Two breaths. Left leg steps forward right behind the left hand. Right foot plants. Now that angle is kind of at two o'clock. You remember what an analog clock is like. It's at maybe a 45 degree angle. Bring your hands to your hips. Square those hips toward the front of the mat. If you need to take a wider stance to do that, please do. Scooch if you need to, coming deeply into that left knee while still pushing into the blade edge of that right foot. Arms go to the ceiling, warrior one. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bend into that knee. Reach behind you. Clasp your hands if you can remember Try to clasp them the other way, so with the other thumb in front. If not, no worries. Pull your shoulder blades back. Belly is tight, looking up. And then humble your warrior. Crown of the head goes to the floor. Knuckles go to the ceiling. If you can, that left shoulder comes on the inside of the left knee. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Reach those knuckles. Reach the four, the crown of the head. And then inhale, come up. Hands to the ceiling, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the mat. One last vinyasa. And back to downward dog. From your downward dog, bring your knees to the mat. Knees as wide as your mat, toes touching, second child's pose. Guess what? We made it to the stretch or the yin part of the class. Yay. So rock back and forth in that child's pose. Get that booty back towards your heels. Reach the hands out in front of you. So much of yoga is oppositional stretching. So as the hands go out toward the front of the mat, the booty goes back toward the back of the mat. That's how you get the stretch. From here, walk your hands over to the right side of the mat. Trying to keep your booty on your heels. So push into that left butt cheek. You can even bring your left hand over your, on top of your right if that works. You want to get a side body stretch here. So pushing down in that left hip as the hands reach toward the right. Again, oppositional. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Walk them back toward the front of the mat, stay there for a second, and then move them over to the left side of the mat. This time the right hand can go on top of the left or you can just have them side by side, whatever your flexibility is. But the important thing is you push down into that right hip or that right butt cheek as you're reaching to the left with the two arms. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more, inhale, exhale. Then on your inhale, walk it back to center. Take a short breath, rest here. And then come up into your tabletop. Knees directly underneath the hips. 
wrists directly underneath the shoulders, maybe a little grip in the fingertips to take some of the heaviness out of your wrists. And let's do some cats and cows. So come to a neutral spine, gaze is down at the mat, neck is neutral, back is neutral. I could balance a drink or a plate of pasta on my back. That's how straight it is. And then in cow, your belly falls, your tailbone goes up, your chest goes straight ahead, your shoulder blades wrap around your spine, and your gaze goes straight ahead. Inhale, cow. Exhale, start from the pelvis. So pull the pelvis in, round the back, chin to chest, push into the hands. Exhale, cat. Now do two more rounds on your own breath, but trying to lead with the pelvis. So in cow, you start by pulling the tailbone up as if somebody has it on a string, just pulling it toward the ceiling. And cat, you pull your pelvis toward you and your chin to your chest as if you're trying to bring the crown of your head to your thighs. And when you're done, coming back to a neutral spine, bringing your left arm to the top left corner of your mat, and we'll take a couple of thread the needle dynamic movements before we go into the static hold. So reach your right arm under, palm is facing up, and then turn to the right and bring your right arm up, palm is facing away from you. So underneath, palm up to the ceiling. To the right, palm is away from you. Thread the needle up. So if you've done that three times, bring that right hand underneath the left. Palm is up, bring it to the ground. Right ear comes to the mat. And you're going to push into that left hand. So keep scooching that right hand away from you toward the left as you push into the left and you bring the weight of your body, your hips, your the top of your back over to the right. Again, oppositional. You can play around with how high or low that right arm is. Is it toward your nose? Is it Mrs. Lulu? She, can't, she's a complete attention hog. She can't help herself. If you would like to go a little deeper here, you can take that left arm and bring it behind you, grabbing with your hand your right thigh or maybe the top of your shirt and pulling your chest toward the ceiling. Now you might even be past your right ear and onto the right side of your head that works for you. I personally like the leverage of my left hand, so up to you. Take one more breath here, and then unravel. Coming back to your tabletop, and we'll take that on the, we'll take it on the left side. We'll start with that dynamic movement. Left arm comes underneath the right, palm is up, and then swings up like you're waving goodbye to someone. Gaze follows your hand, coming back underneath, threading the needle, palm up, back up, waving goodbye, and two more, trying to exaggerate sort of the movement a little bit. And then when you're ready, threading that left arm underneath the right, left ear comes to the mat, readjusting, pushing into that right hand, is at the right top corner of the mat and pushing the weight into the left side of your body. These can come up or it can remain straight. You can take that bind here if that felt good to you, pulling that right shoulder back, pulling the chest up toward the ceiling or you can maintain the leverage by having that right hand down and pushing. Inhale, exhale, 
Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Coming back to your tabletop. Taking a puppy now. So in your tabletop, you have this nice flat back. Puppy, you're going to walk your hands out in front of you. Come down to your forearms and your tailbone goes up like you're a puppy who's in a what they call a play bow, right? They're wanting to play. And keep scooching your arms out like Superman arms. Maybe you come to your forehead. You can also come to your chin. The idea is to try to get your tailbone in the air and your chest toward the mat. Nice back bend. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, and on your inhale, just start scooching out of it, walking your hands back, staying on your forearms, bringing your feet and legs back so your legs are straight, toenails to the ground, coming into sphinx or maybe cobra pose, so your elbows once again are right underneath your shoulders. And once you are in the pose, push your pelvis into the ground, push the pointy part of your elbows into the ground, and push your chest forward as your gaze goes straight ahead and your shoulder blades go back, wrapping around your spine. So this is actually, people think of this as a resting pose, but this is actually a very active pose. Really great for your lower back. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, and now just roll over onto your backs, bringing knees to chest, making circles with your knees. You can take both knees in the circle, so doing the circle at once, or you can take both the opposite knee in opposite direction, so you're making like a figure eight, whatever feels good to you here. Another nice thing to do before Shavasana is plant the feet, knees are bent, and just windshield wiper. So any of those or some combination of the two is perfectly awesome. And then bring your knees to your chest if they aren't already there. Grab the blade edges of your feet, soles of the feet toward the ceiling, happy baby rock side to side if you like. Our last pose before Shavasana. And then bring your knees to your chest, your feet to the ground, your legs come out straight, your arms overhead, take a good morning stretch, stretching in opposite direction so the hands are stretching over your head, your toes are pointing, you're stretching every part of your body. And then exhale, release. Open up your legs, let your feet fall open. Arms can come by your sides, palms up or palms down. Another comfortable posture is with one hand on your heart and one on your belly, or you can have both hands on your belly. Shavasana. This is your resting pose. I'm going to do a short body scan here just to get us into the pose. So take a big inhale. Feel that inhale going from your waist all the way to the crown of your head and then whooshing back down. As that breath whooshes back down, maybe let go of that space between your eyebrows. Are you scrunching there? Maybe let go of your jaw. You can even let it fall open. One more whoosh from the waist. The breath goes all the way to the crown of the head. And then exhale, whoosh, it goes back to the waist. Now imagine the breath coming from your toes. Inhale, it goes all the way up your legs, past your waist, past your chest, all the way to the top of your head. Exhale, it goes all the way back down. Inhale, toes, waist, chest, crown of the head. 
exhale all the way back down to the toes. Letting go. Scanning your body for any residual tension. It is always my honor to guide you in this yoga practice. The light in me welcomes honors and adores the light in each and every one of you. Have a beautiful week. Namaste, yogis.